chez Avid au Boot, euh, sur le, dans le South Hall, au deuxième étage, euh, l'endroit où on retrouve depuis plusieurs années le Boot David. Je suis avec Matt, qui s'occupe du marketing chez Avid. Et on va parler de Media Composer 7 et de toutes les nouveautés euh, du release qui s'en vient bientôt, qui va être disponible sur euh, leur site et chez vos revendeurs bientôt. So, Matt... Yeah. So we're at NAB 2013, and uh, you just announced Media Composer 7 with tons of new features and new way to uh, like market all the, uh, the features and Symphony that came some how a plugin. So can you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, you know, Media Composer 7 has a lot of huge new features. A lot of them are really targeted at media management and file-based workflows, which is becoming a big challenge for a lot of people. Um, first, we're introducing a new thing called dynamic media folders. These are user programmable folders that do media management for you in the background. Things like copy, consolidate, transcode. Um, and to help that out, we actually also have background processing. So I want to do a consolidator transcode of my media. That all happens in the background, and I can just keep editing and working on the creative elements of my story. Um, you know, part of file-based workflows is also the high-res resolution, people wanting to work with 4K, 5K. Um, so we've introduced some new tools to help with that. Um, one called FrameFlex, which really, to, to make it simple, is pan and scan for high-res. Okay. So I can natively link directly to ARRI or RED or, or XAVC and extract from that uh, an HD image without losing any of the resolution from the high-res. And I can keyframe that in a pan and scan uh, method. Also support for 1D, 3D LUTs and color decision lists, so you're working with RAW or, um, or Pro... Uh, a log C material. Is that all done in the effects panel? Or uh, is it for uh, like another interface? It's actually a combination of both. When I first get my media into the system, I can set all of it up at once. Let's say I get a whole folder full of area media um, that needs a LUT applied or a reframe applied. I can do that all at once, but then once it's in the timeline, if I want to make changes, I can always do that because these things aren't baked into the files. They're just sort of like sidecar files. Avid also makes Pro Tools, and we have some really cool, yeah. um, we're sharing some features with Pro Tools. First, um, they're also now using the Avid video engine. So media that was uh, worked on in a media composer system can just be brought over to Pro Tools and played back natively without any sort of conversion that has to happen or special hardware. But we're taking from them some really cool stuff. We now have a, a master audio fader um, that allows you to do a level and tonal adjustments to your entire mix um, in a single channel strip. So we always had Artaz plugins, real-time audio suite plugins, mm -hmm. for individual tracks. Now you can apply those on the entire mix, which is great for dealing with loudness issues and you know the government's having stricter regulations on loudness, things like the Com Act. It makes it much easier for the content creator to take care of that stuff without having to put too much work into it. Yeah, and you've, I, I've seen you've also put like a little feature, like a little fader on every clip. It's yeah, exactly. very convenient for a lot, a lot of stuff and doing some quick adjustments. Well, and that's really what you want to do. You want to make things easier for the editor so they don't have to spend time thinking about what they're doing. They're just thinking about storytelling. So something like uh, you know direct click, clip gain I, I might want to make a quick adjustment to the level of an individual clip, but I don't want to go and open up a whole separate tool for that. So I can just click right on the clip itself and just drag and drag that level up and down. Um, also, the waveforms. Uh, Pro Tools has always done something called audio caching of waveforms, where yeah. once it once it writes the file for the for the waveform, it remembers it. Yeah. Now we do that as well. So not only do our waveforms come up much faster, um, they draw a lot better, but they're also persistent. So the next time I go back to my project, if I've already loaded the waveform for that, it's ready to go right away. So we see that all the developing teams are really working together to give us better products on the audio side and on the video side, and all the technologies are really coming together. Absolutely. So that's very cool for for everybody. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one of the, like I said, it's one of the great benefits of the fact that Avid makes you know the leading video editing system is also the, the leading digital audio workstation. You get to share some really cool technology is also really help people make the transition from picture editorial to audio post much more seamless. I mean that's. When you think about it, one of the things that slows down production isn't so much things that happen in the system, but moving from one phase of post-production to another. So anything we can do to make that easier is going to be a big benefit to the customer. Media Composer historically has had options like Phrase Find and Script Sync. Um, now Symphony, the, the features that used to differentiate Symphony from Media Composer, are now available in Media Composer as an option. So as you said, the, the advanced color correction, which gives you things like secondary color correction, uh, Avid's unique relational color correction, where you can make an adjustment to one shot, and it'll automatically apply those adjustments to other shots that have related metadata, like came from the same source clip or source tape. Um, also universal mastering, when you know cross-converting from different HD formats. And we also bundle the Bors, uh, uh, the BCC plugin uh, package with Symphony as well. So although Symphony is no longer available as a standalone product, All the features that used to differentiate it are possible now in Media Composer very easily. And do you still have all the, the real-time deliverables like, like you have to use to have with the, the hardware in multiple formats and stuff? Exactly. So if you want to do something like universal mastering, uh, the Nitrous DX hardware is what enables that. So absolutely, that hasn't changed at all. 
So uh, Matt, now you have like one editing solution with add-ons. So what's the price point on uh, MIDI Composer 7 and the uh, Symphony add-on that you, you can buy? Sure. So this is a pretty radical departure for us. Uh, MIDI Composer is now priced at $999 US, which is a significant value with all the features you get. If you want to add the additional Symphony color correction tools, its universal mastering capabilities, and the Boris Continuum Complete Package, that's another $1499. Um, if you want to work in interplay-enabled workflows, there's a lot of people doing distributed workflows these days. Um, it's a, it's a $14.99 price point for Media Composer to enable that functionality so that you can edit and collaborate with people using interplay uh, sites anywhere in the world. So those are the basic price points for Media Composer. Pretty simple, pretty clean, and very aggressive. Cool. So I'm sure all the post house editors will be very happy with that. Yeah. I mean, like you did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we really always want to lead with the features. It's all about the technology and the tools that we're, we're, we're putting in place. But yeah, people are definitely very excited about this new aggressive price point. Cool. Well, thank you. Now we'll go on the Proto side and see what's new. Okay, I thank think you're going to like it.